We are here, Audioholic Smart House, boots on the ground. We got Jason Dustel from Meridio. We're gonna be talking about HDMI, how to get the transmission for long distances to get your 4K, your 48 gigabits throughput, all the different methods. That's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasala with Audioholics, and we are here with Jason Dustel from Meridio. How you doing, Jason? Good, Gene. Thank you for having me. I'm doing great today. Always a pleasure to have you here, yeah, my friend. Yeah, it's always fun. We always have a great time. So I want to talk to you about the Audioholics Smart House. Mm -hmm. We ran a lot of cable behind drywall. We're talking three miles of Cat 6, Woo. speaker cable, coax. <laughs> Everything. You name All it. All the cables. Yeah. <laughs> so the challenge in this house was uh, through the guys at Haven Smart, we built a media rack upstairs, mm -hmm. right? In that media rack has all of our AV receivers for the family room, for the uh, master bedroom, distributed video, distributed audio. Mm -hmm. We had to somehow get HDMI signaling down here to this TV. And of course, we want to support the latest in 4K video. Obviously, there's no 8K yet, but we want to have that capability We're going there. forward. We're getting there. So we ran a couple of runs of Cat 6. We also ran another product through mm -hmm. AV Pro Edge um, to do the repeaters on it for HD Base T, mm -hmm. and we also have the bullet train cable. Why don't you give us a rundown? Because the way I see it, there's three ways of transmitting high resolution audio and video mm -hmm. for long distances. And when I say long distances, I mean beyond a few meters. Because let's yeah. face it, let's face it, years ago, you could use a regular HDMI cable for 1080p and you mm -hmm. could go 15 meters fine, no problems. Yeah, yeah. But we're not 15 meters anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not, you know, 1080p anymore. Right. We're 4K, we're potentially putting 18 gigabits of throughput and it's not so easy for most passive cables to pass it beyond a few meters. Yeah, and you know, we, we've seen over the years many times that you know, if you do go with a longer cable that's just a regular passive copper cable, when you do get beyond, honestly, like five, six, seven meters even, um, the cable ends up being this big because the wire gauge has to be huge yeah. to pass all that information uh, for, for that long of a distance. So we're starting to see now, um, with especially with HDMI 2.1 and we get into the 40 and 48 gig world, um, it's even worse. So like we're, what we're doing now is anything beyond two meters, we're starting to talk about doing alternative cabling and alternative transport, such as the fiber-based, you know, hybrid HDMI cables, uh, fiber extenders and HD base T extenders. So, you know, we're still, we're still fighting that battle of trying to send uh, high bandwidth signals a long distance. It's just now we're talking about more bandwidth, that's all. So before we get into the different product solutions, I wanna talk from a pre-construction standpoint, before the drywall's up, when you got your framing in the house, what do you recommend that people run to each of their displays? So as of right now, um, I'm a big redundancy kind of guy. Mm. So um, what we're kind of uh, recommending to people now, um, Cat 6A is, is kind of the, the minimum these days. Uh, there's still a lot of Cat 5E out there, but for internet type stuff and, and that type of data, that's fine. But when we're doing these really high bandwidth signals, um, anything past 1080p especially, we really want to do Cat 6A. So uh, the recommendation is to do Cat 6A at least one, right? Because you might use one as an extender. Yeah. You might use a second one to hardwire the TV to the network. You might want to run more than two, just depending on the system, of course. And again, yeah. redundancy if one dies or gets stapled when they put the drywall up or whatever, you know, you, you'll still have that cable in there. The newest thing that we're recommending now is straight fiber. Now, this is really cool because we have not been able to measure how much bandwidth the fiber can take. There's not machinery, there's not instrumentation yet available to put out that much bandwidth through the fiber cable. Yeah. So we're talking about 18 gigs, 48 gigs. Yeah. The fiber cable is asleep at even 48 gigs. Wow. So, um, and there's a few different, um, uh, there's a few different types of fiber and in uh, longer distances, you want better clarity of the fiber itself. And so there's still a few kind of questions to answer in that aspect, but um, the fiber that we like to use is from a company called Clearline because me or you or anybody can terminate the Clearline fiber 
right there in the field, right there on the spot. You don't have to wear a hazmat suit like we used to with fiber. Um, you can splice it yourself. It, it, it's not going to get into your skin and, and cause problems with your body and stuff. So it's just a lot easier now to do the fiber stuff. And it comes in just a single run. It comes in what we call a duplex. So it's two runs, like what we might see with like a speaker cable, for example. Mm -hmm. And then there's, you know, you can go above and beyond that too. There's some that are even six or even 12. And that's for redundancy, not for extra bandwidth, right? Well, you know, it's, I mean, honestly, when we run a fiber cable or any kind of cable for that matter through your wall, I don't want to tear this wall apart in 10 years. Yeah. So a lot of it is for redundancy, but a lot of it too is none of us have a crystal ball. We don't know what's going to happen after 48 gigs. I don't want to tear the wall apart again. So I'm going to build an infrastructure that's going to handle everything for a very long time. Right. So what we did here with Haven Smart is we ran three Cat6 runs to every display. There you go. Right. And then I had the opportunity because we were building a wall upstairs to close off our office. I'm like, you know what? Why don't we put in one of the bullet cables while you're here? Bullet train cable, HDMI sure. fiber cable. And that's been just awesome, man. Yeah. It's I think it's 15 meters. Yeah, they're uh, they're up to 60 meters right now. Mm -hmm. um, the, the ultimate goal with our friends over at Bullet Train is 100 meters. Um, we've made them before and gotten them to work, but we're just not at a point right now where we're ready to put it out into the public. But yeah, remember, man, 100 meters is a really, really, really long run. Uh, but we're extremely happy right now with the 15s, the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, up to about 60 meters. Um, it's awesome to go that route because you don't have to worry about extenders and transmitters and receivers. For all anybody else would ever think, it's just an HDMI cable. It looks like an HDMI cable. It works like an HDMI cable. And that's how we're going to get uncompressed, perfect picture, perfect sound from point A to point B without having to use extenders. And the thing is, um, it supports eARC right out of the gate, right? I the, mean, it's the just, cable? Yeah. The, yeah. The, the bullet train cables especially, they support all the things. Right. Mm -hmm. And it says, if you look at the box, it says 48 gigabits mm -hmm. throughput. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing I want to ask you about. How does, how does a consumer know when they're buying an HDMI cable? What can they look at? Is there a standard that's measured for these cables so we know what the speed rating is or the yeah. throughput rating is for these cables? A lot of that stuff is standardized by HDMI.org, by, by those folks who, they are HDMI. Um, they, uh, they have a few different methods. Um, on a lot of packaging for a lot of cables, you'll see the specs you know, uh, of, of what the cable can do as far as bandwidth and features it supports and things like that. Um, the really good HDMI cable manufacturers, they're, a lot of them are listed on the HDMI website, so it's totally legit. Um, the issue that we're seeing right now in that world is that there's gazillions of HDMI cables out there, and a lot of them don't do what they say they do. Mm -hmm. So uh, a, a good reference would be uh, usehdmi.org, and then some other manufacturers are putting a QR code on the packaging, so you can scan the QR code and it, it tells you that the cable's legit. But at, you know, at the end of the day, Gene, there's, there's a lot of different ways you can check that the cable's legit. Um, we, you, know, you just have to make sure that when you're spending that much money on a cable, these longer ones, just to be fully transparent, they're not inexpensive because it's, you know, it's new technology mm -hmm. and it's stuff that really hasn't existed before. So when you're spending that kind of money on an HDMI cable, it probably is a good thing to get it, you know, to have it checked out before you. Uh, before you put it in the wall. So I noticed these cables, these um, bullet train cables, they have like a little USB extender mm -hmm. on them to add power. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the way I see that is it really depends when you should use that. It depends on the source equipment and the device, right? Depends on everything, yeah. Because like I have a Marantz SR8015 and I think that that has pretty good current drive out mm -hmm. of the uh, HDMI mm -hmm. driver. I didn't need to use the uh, USB extender on it. Yeah, um, I'll give you a, a personal experience, just my system at home. Um, I've got an Oppo player, and uh, for a long time I had a JVC projector. And you know, it, it wasn't a short run, it wasn't a super long run, but it was, it was long enough to use one of the AOC cables. And in my particular case in that instance, I did not need the, the dongle to go onto the end of the cable. But to your point, there are some devices out there where the, the voltage coming out of that HDMI is just not quite there. So you have the, the dongle that you attach to the cable and that gives it a little bit more power. And and that just lowers the noise floor in, for the yeah, transmission, it, right? It, it does a lot of different things. You, know, you have to remember too that in the uh, AOC cables, um, uh, if you look at them really closely, there's a source end and a display end, mm -hmm. and you have to make sure you get that in the right orientation. Uh, and if you don't, you're going to have you're going to have lots of problems. So um, when when you look at those uh, the HDMI ends on the cable, there's a little chip in there that has to convert the the, the uh, has to convert from regular electrons over to uh, 
to light. Yeah. And then on the other end, it has to go from light back to normal electrons. So there's a little bit going on in there. And if you're having problems with, with the cable, uh, maybe the picture's flashing or something, throw on one of those little USB dongle adapter deals and problem solved. Which side, the source side or the display side? Here's the cool part. You could do either. Oh, okay. So if you do it one end and it doesn't work, try the other end. And if you're really having problems, you could even do both ends. The big thing is you have to make sure you put the cable correctly installed. You gotta have the source and the yeah, device. Yeah. Because if you flip it, it won't work. Right, and I have literally seen this in, my, in real life with my own eyes. There was mm -hmm. a job in uh, South Tampa, and this was one of those just really cool, almost industrial looking homes with concrete floors and polished and everything. So the wall was concrete, and they were wondering why the system wasn't working. They had the cable backwards, and this had already been done. So absolutely quadruple check to make sure that you have those cables in the right orientation. Well, if that does happen, if an installer puts the cable in backwards, yeah. my understanding is you could cut the ends of it and re-terminate, right? You can. Um, that uh, We'll take a look at how to, how to do that uh, a little bit later, but um, yeah, absolutely. You can lop off the end of the HDMI cable and there's four pieces of fiber inside that cable. So we talked earlier about running one piece of fiber there's four inside that AOC cable. So you've got the redundancy, you've got more than enough bandwidth than what we'll see in our generation at least. Um, but yeah, it's a simple termination. Uh, it, there's a little, uh, what we call an LC connector. You terminate the LC connector onto the fiber and now you're back in action. So whether the cable's like damaged at the head end or it's just not working for whatever reason, lop the head end off, re-terminate it, back in business. So that's really the best. If you're doing pre-construction and you're looking at um, how you're gonna transmit your HDMI to your displays, Really, fiber or an active cable, an active fiber cable like this is the number one solution to go to. Yeah. But if you don't have that luxury and you already have your house already wired for CAT6, let's talk about the balms that you have. Yeah. So um, th this is sort of the tried and true. This is how we've done it you know, for all this time. And it's been working really, really well. Um, the, the general thought is that you know the HDMI comes from your source or out of your AVR or whatever and it goes into a transmitter, then a category cable, in this case we're using CAT6A these days, that category cable gets ran up to 100 meters if you need it, which is really far. Um, once the HDMI cable hits the other end by the display, there's a receiver that it plugs into, and then the receiver has an HDMI cable that plugs into the TV. So we're actually using the category cable to extend that high bandwidth HDMI uh, audio video. So now I thought I read it could go up to 328 feet. Is that, that's about- Yeah, 100 meters is 100, 330 yeah, feet. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, they, they come in- And that's in, for 4K? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Wow. They, uh, they come in three lengths, typically 40 meters, 70 meters, 100 meters. Um, our friends at AV Pro figured out this really cool thing where if you chain two extenders together, you can go extra long distances. Uh, beyond 100 meters, but only at 1080p. So there are some little things that you can do um, to to maybe adapt to a system that's already in. Right. Another good example that AV Pro guys have is uh, have a little uh, scaler. It's called an SC1. So let's say for example that you only have Cat5 in the in the wall and you need Cat6. There's a little trick that we figured out by using two of those little scalers. We can make old infrastructure work with the new system. So there's lots and lots of options out there, and that's one thing that we really try to do is to give um, to give everybody a chance to get these really awesome, I mean, you guys know, you see it all the time now, but these really good HDR uh, movies and TV shows. I mean, when you see that stuff, you can't unsee it and that's yeah. all you want to watch anymore. Yeah. So, you know, we want everybody to be able to, to really enjoy that type of stuff. So we've got lots of different solutions to help almost anybody overcome any of these weird things that we see. Now, I thought that CAT6 was limited to like 10 gigabits of throughput, but yeah. HDMI 2.1 goes to 18 gigs. So how does that the, work? Yeah, the, the 2.1 goes to 48. So yeah. we're talking about an ethernet cable or category cable that can only do 10.2 gigs. You're exactly right. And that's just a physical limitation to what that cable can pass. So there has to be some trickery, I'll call it, to make that high bandwidth signal work through an ethernet cable. So our friends at AV Pro have figured out a way to do this compression without destroying the picture. I mean, you know, as an audio guy, mm -hmm. as soon as you start compressing things, we don't want the picture to look like how an MP3 sounds, right? <laughs> exactly. So um, the, the whole goal here is to get point A to point B without any visible artifacts or visible right. compression. And the AV Pro guys came up with this awesome solution. They call it ICT, Invisible Compression Technology. And I'm telling you, Gene, as a video guy with, I mean, I've got really good Your eyes. ISF guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if, if we were to look at two monitors next to each other, two TVs, 
and they were calibrated exactly the same and everything was the same. One was hooked up with a direct HDMI cable from the source. One is hooked up through an extender with that compression technology. You cannot tell the difference. I can't tell the difference unless I am an inch from the screen. And even then the differences are extremely subtle. So a TV like this, this is what, 85? Yep. And you're sitting 10 feet away maybe? Yeah. You would never see it in a million years. So it's a really good solution. Now, at the end of the day, if your house or, your, or whatever the project is, does have Cat5, there is a really good chance that that extender is still gonna work. So I don't wanna scare everybody away mm -hmm. from Cat5 because that's in a lot of homes already. Um, and, in fact, with the, with the AV Pro stuff and others that I've seen, all of the testing and development and stuff was around Cat5e. So it should work, but we know the limitations of Cat5. So you know, if you do have Cat5 still in your system, it's still worth definitely trying without having to run new wires. But um, at the end of the day though, we are recommending Cat 6A. We know it works. We yeah. know there's no problems. Yeah. And, and you want to do that anyway if you're setting up a home network. Oh, for sure. Yeah, if you want for to sure. do a one gigabit switch, you really need mm -hmm. Cat 6. Yeah. So the other option too is if you don't want to run a bullet cable through drywall or through your pre-construction and you don't want to do Cat 6, you could run bare fiber yeah. and then you have extenders, mm -hmm. just like the analog extenders for Cat6, you have extenders that work through fiber. Yeah, yeah. Is and there any advantage to those over the, over the so Cat6? So here's where it gets really cool. Now we're talking uncompressed. Mm. So we're HD base T as much as we love it and we've had it for all this time, it is compressed down to 10.2 gigs because of the category cable. With fiber, the sky's the limit. And with fiber, one kilometer. So we can go wow. really, really, really far. And I'll, give, I'll just give you one instance of, of a project that we were part of. There's a guy, I think he was in Texas maybe. He had a gate at the front of his property with a camera. The house was forever away. So they ran fiber underground and that's how we were getting signal from the camera all the way back to the house. It's fiber, no big deal. We can go as long as we want. Awesome. Yeah, lots of stadiums and yeah, really long yeah. runs and auditoriums and stuff like that. It's perfect for that kind of stuff. So in a situation like yours, you know, your rack is up there, the TV's here, it's not this ultra long run, but what if you had a TV, you know, out on your patio across the house or something like that, then that's when we want to start considering things like fiber. Those long distances beyond 100 meters, it can do it all day, every day, mm -hmm. no problem. And I'll go back to the point that I really enjoy as a video guy and you really enjoy as an audio guy, it is completely uncompressed, which is sweet. So after we, we basically talked about three different solutions now to transmit long signals beyond a few meters. We talked about the bullet connector mm -hmm. or the bullet yep. uh, cable, which mm -hmm. is fiber. We talked about CAT6 with the Ballum extenders. Mm -hmm. And we talked about raw fiber and with the uh, HDMI extenders for fiber. Once this is all installed, um, what's the process in terminating these solutions? And, and also, how do you test it to make sure before the client comes in to test, to, to use the equipment, how do we know that this is gonna work? Is there any way you can test this out so it avoids problems in the future when people are trying to watch TV and, and they don't get interruption of services? Absolutely. Um, there are, um, shameless plug, there are some pieces of test equipment out there where you, where you can certainly test this kind of stuff. And for installers, this is these are absolutely essential tools. Um, there are, there's a toolkit to test the fiber run itself. There's a toolkit to test HD base T and there's toolkits to test HDMI. So as long as, long as the infrastructure is good and you've put your AOC cable in the right direction and those types of things, um, what's really cool about the test equipment, I can leave the projector in the box. I haven't even opened it yet. I can use the test gear to test the infrastructure. I can use an analyzer where the TV is supposed to go, make sure the right signal is getting there. So you can build up the infrastructure and make sure that's solid before you even put the gear in. And oh, that's, wow. what, that's what we recommend to everybody. I mean, you wouldn't go to a mechanic that didn't have a scanner to plug into your car. So in our world, we have scanners for HDMI, for fiber, and for HD base T. So even if you don't have this kind of test gear, and if you have a Denon or Marantz receiver, the cool oh, yeah. Really cool about that is they have an HDMI diagnostic mode. Mm -hmm. You can literally plug the cable in and it'll tell you how much signal it will pass yeah. at what resolution. Yeah, we, uh, we, we worked with them a little bit on that you know, a few years ago and it was really nice to see that come to fruition because to your point, this, the, the test gear is really designed for installers and it's, it's not inexpensive. You know, it, it is, a, is a reference tool, if you will. But you know, now anybody can use their receiver to test the cables for, mm -hmm. for 18 gigs or eventually 48. So I was really happy to see that because now the everyday person, they can buy cables from wherever and before they permanently install them, especially the DIY guys, make sure the cable's good before you put it in. 
Once you test it, good to go, no surprises. Right. All right, guys, so we talked about the three different ways to transmit HDMI signaling over long distances. Give me some comments down below. How are you guys doing it? I'm sure there's a lot of people that have a projector in their setup and the projector might be 20 feet away from you know the, the AV equipment rack. Tell me what you're doing. Did you run conduit through your ceiling? Are you pulling fiber through it? Are you doing CAT6? Or are you just using a cable, an active cable? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'd like to hear your comments down below how you guys are doing that. And um, stay tuned for further videos because we want to do some testing. We're going to show you how just how awesome that the signaling is working in mm -hmm. here with all of Jason's test gear. I think it's it's just a, it's, it's an interesting topic you don't hear people talk much about. Yeah, it's not it's not the sexiest thing like these speakers behind you. You know, <laughs> it's kind of the behind the scenes kind yeah. of nerdy stuff. But at the end of the day, Gene, the job of the old cable should be to pull the new cable. So uh, you you just hit the Good nail point. on the head. You mentioned conduit. I cannot tell you and I cannot stress enough how much easier it is to retrofit and, and things like that if there's conduit in the wall. Oh yeah, if, if Smurf the, tube basically. Right, yeah. that the job I told you about before where the wall was concrete, no conduit. And if there had been conduit, I could have tied the new cable to the old cable and just yanked it right through. So if you're in a retrofit situation and you can put in conduit, do it. If it's a new build, no questions asked, run conduit. And again, just to recap guys, if you're building a house right now and it's in frame stage, like the guys at Haven Smart do, Run three runs of Cat Six. It's not that expensive. Pull a fiber to the really important locations, yes, absolutely. right? Absolutely. This is a really important location. This is where we watch most of our TV. We've got fiber and Cat Six here, so we've mm -hmm. got redundancy. We're ready for Skynet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty soon you're going to have the uh, the the motion 3D stuff, like in uh, with the Tom Cruise movie Minority Report. Oh yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. It's it's probably going to be here. Anyway. Be ready for the future. You know, <laughs> do it now. Go through the pain now so you don't yeah. have to, like you said, in 10 years, start breaking concrete or breaking a <laughs> yeah, wall. Nobody you, wants to do that. You don't want to do it. Trust yeah. me. You don't want to do that. <laughs> so anyways, guys, I hope you liked this video. Thank you, Jason, for coming Anytime. and participating. It's Always awesome. Fun. Awesome to have you. Guys, don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to us if you want to suggest video topics or ask questions. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.
Oh, you're recording already? Yeah, it's cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get in the yeah in the feng shake shui. It shake it up. Yeah. All my theater friends when I worked in theater, <laughs> shake it up, shake it up. <laughs> Speed rating. Um, well, where's the box? Yeah, box is right here. Uh, ISF certified, oh, yeah, HDR could, ready. You could mention that too, that they're ISF. Well, He's kind of a rock star when it comes to video. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. All right, you ready? Sure. You ready? Sure. All right. My thought process when I was, oh, I had it. Oh, I just hate when this happens. That's a great moment. I know, right? <laughs> crickets. Talking, you get to hear lots of crickets. We were talking about QR codes. We were talking about HDMI.org. I was watching this YouTuber, How to Beast. He's like, you got to get up in the morning. You got to punch yourself everywhere. I'm like, uh, no. I'm like rolling out of bed like this. Um, the other thing that we're looking at, too, um, ooh, we have to cut there. I lost my train of thought. Yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah, trying Trying to remember my. I'm sorry about this that. This is Nick from Audio Advice. Hey, how's it going? That's Jason. Do you know Jason Dustel? I don't think we've met. Think no. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You know, in a in a in a in a situation like this, where you have the rack up there. I'll get it. Let me. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I can. I know where I'm at. I can pick back up. <clears throat> hey, hey, buddy. How's it going? We're it's funny because every time that happens, oh, it's like. Let me just finish the video. I have to edit. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna be in the blooper. <laughs>